Alright guys, I wanted to make a video filling you guys in on the project I've been working on for the past few weeks. This is a wooden sailing yacht. Of course, it does not actually have sails because Stormworks is jank. Instead, it is a motor yacht, but it's designed after a kind of classic sailing yacht hole. So right now you can't see it, but let's turn on some lights. So this thing has like a million and one features, so I'm going to be covering all of them in today's video. And I want to take suggestions, this is not on the workshop yet. I still need suggestions on what to add and things that need fixing. So, as you can see we've got a lot of things, but basically this is the helm region here on the back of the boat. It's pretty nice. We've got access to everywhere. So we'll start with a tour before I just get straight on to driving. These gauges here give us engine RPS and temp at an easy access. You can get it better. We've got fluid tethers for gas, player sensors, and I'll show you what those are for in a bit. These here allow us to repair engines. Both engines are exposed there. These are our main engines. There are more. As we move towards the front here, we've got a nice deck here. We've got another fluid connector. This is for the front fuel tank and an electrical connector. I think there's also an electrical one on the back. We've got some handles on the deck so people in big storms can hold on. Got them here on the sides. Again, more player sensors. I think most people will know what those are for. This small switch here, deck lights. So, you see that lit up. These side lights here, lighting up these pathways, and the back deck. And these, the nav lights and spotlights, automatically turn on at night, but can be toggled with the keybind 3. But the deck lights need to be turned on manually. Alright, so this, uh, uh, let's, let's take an interior. Sorry. So we open this up. Nice thing. You notice water doesn't leak in. That happens a lot on some of these boats like this. So here we've got an instrument panel. Got some lights. We do have heaters. So we turn on the lights. This is our main room, like the living room, kind of. Some seats. We've got a kitchenette. We've got some detailing on the walls. As we move forward, we've got the bedroom and the study kind of combined here. Again, intense detail everywhere in this boat. For some reason, my mouse is freaking out and it's making it. doesn't want to zoom. It doesn't want to be sensitive. Anyway, we will go to the back here where we've got our eating region my god my mouse I'm literally picking it up and dragging it across my table right now to make to make a movement um, we've got two doors in here this one is our engine room we've got a switch in here for lights two seats for anyone that wants to sit down here and this is the booster engine this one will only kick in to give additional speed once the other two are fully engaged and uh, it can go up to 30 RPS and it's a little bit heftier setup and so this is how you access it it was basically added because we needed more speed this thing with the two engines it can get up to 20 with all three engines it gets up to 40 or miles per hour that is not meters per second we've got inventory storage and later on this will be tool storage once the update comes out these are my f are some of the more advanced features of this boat. These, c the flood and collision warning, both work really well. There are constant on signals all around the boat that feed into a controller, and basically, if any of them turn off, it gives a collision warning, and they'll turn off if they get damaged. So it can tell if the boat's been if the boat has hit something, at least hit something hard enough to damage logic nearby which is still a pretty big hit. Little damages won't do that because typically it's got to hit one of the detectors. But I put them in the hot spots for logic around the boat so that if one of those gets damaged we will get a warning. 
Now you're like, but wait, where's the warning? It must be one of these, but it isn't. This is reverse, this is cruise control, this is it. So, very low fidelity. Where do we fit all this? Well, if you push 4, we get some more controls. This gives us our belly proximity, battery, stabilizer, and general alarm, and a rear view. So, driving this, it's really easy. Push 1, we're already going. Engine started just like that. Idling, you can idle for a long time and it will just charge up your battery. Push W and it, and it starts it a few more times to get it going. And now we're cruising along. Also, if you notice, this is a gorgeous hole shape. This was done painstakingly to a design I had been planning out for a little while. Notice the back is very artistically done too. So, now that we're going, we've fully throttled it up. That's what that bar is, the green bar. If I push 2, it locks that and I can let go. It's got a cruise control mode that locks it so I can get off the helm and walk around. Now, say, whoops, I fell off the boat. What now? It waits for me. Those are what all the player sensors are doing. I want this to be career mode friendly so that you can do stuff in career mode. It can be a useful boat. And the problem with this boat is in stormy weather, people fall off. It happens. So as long as there's a person on the boat, it'll keep on going. But if, and all you gotta do to reset it is just hop on the helm and it gets going again. Like there was never even an issue. So you're like, no, this is good and all, but we're only going like 25 miles per hour. That's realistic, sure, but is that good for career mode when you need to get somewhere fast and you're running out of time? Well, flat out, it isn't. So I put this in. If I push 5, it enters sport mode. This is a little less stable and you cannot leave the helm while you're in sport mode or else you risk going off course but it doesn't turn it off or anything so it's not perfectly idiot proof so you'll see these additional exhausts kick in on the side of the boat to allow more flow for the booster engine with this kicked in we pulling um, 41 42 miles per hour which is a much good it's much better speed for missions like this that you need to do stuff fast so this boat also is meant for more luxury and a more leisurely experience. So I included some river things for navigating rivers on the Sawyer Islands. If you push six, a new display pops up and it shows your left and your right distances off of the nose. I was gonna have a nav system for this but it was a little bit complicated to work with and it didn't feel right on this boat. So I simply did a left and right distance and the screen switches to a crow's nest cam way up on the front mast. Another thing to mention, if you look at this front spotlight, if you push your left and right buttons, you can move it. That's pretty useful if you need to see things, you know. It's good to give a good sweeping angle of the light. It gives you good visibility. Um, uh, the boat runs beautifully. Like, turn it off, and it will just sit there. No issues. The engines won't fight you. They won't be inefficient. They're, like, completely automated engines. This, all the Lua's on this craft, I built myself. There's only a few. <laughs> um, this boat handles low speeds really well. Take a look here. I've just engaged at a low low pace. You'll see we won't hardly even move, you know. But it handles it like a dream. So you could just kinda cruise right along, not having to worry about the boat making funny noises or being annoying. When we get down to radio, um it's as easy as this. The channel selector is here. 
the speaker is here, but you're like, where's the microphone? The microphone has been moved back up here. It feels weird, but it's good so that you can be here at the helm and talk. And you see how it automatically engaged? There's two large RXs in the bottom of this boat that always are sending and receiving on whatever channel is selected so that you don't have to have a push to talk in game and out of game which I think is ridiculous so I just have it an exterior push to talk anyway um... let's see here we've got yeah so I think what we should do now is test some of these warning and collision systems ooh but before that Let's see how this thing handles heavy weather and nighttime conditions. So a lot of people wonder about this kind of thing. So, this boat, this is at a low speed. Let's kick it up a notch. Now, a thing to note, in the back mast, it's hard to see, but that is the air intake. The exhaust pipe up there, that is the air intake. Meaning, that this boat, now the booster, those are the main engines air intakes. The booster motor air intake is over, oh, see, there, fell off, but it's going to wait for me. That is the beauty of this design. See, that I've gone through the trouble to make it usable, even though normally, because this game is just not a very practical boat hole to go for, but I've made it usable to the point where it's better than some of these others just because of its optimization. So you see this air intake here? This is for your booster engine. So in super intense conditions, I would not recommend running the booster just because you could get a little water down that intake. Not the biggest deal, but you know, it's a thing. Anyway, so we need some heaters. Heaters right there. They'll cover the whole boat. We've got some other buttons here. Bilge pumps. Those are pretty nice and roof lights. I don't like those really, but they're there. You'll see them in a moment. I might as well use these bilge pumps on. Damn it. Roof lights, they just light up the roof so that a small helicopter could come in and land. Again, a feature that's unrealistic, but it's very much Stormworks. So I had it installed. Well, I installed it. You know what? Back on our way. This thing can just kind of clean through anything. I have jumped tsunamis in it. Jumps right over them. No issue. It does flip on the lay down though. No performance issues in high, tur high turbulent waters. You know. We've got a lot of decorative stuff here going on on the deck. Notice how the radio on the deck lights up whenever I activate my talk. We've got some drawers detailed in the deck. We've got a fishing rod and some sodas over here. Beers or whatever you want to call it. Again, the automatic nav lights and things. Anyway, let's test some of these warning systems. So you should get a warning generally whenever you're in critical danger and you need to go back home. So I'm going to kick in the booster. And we're going to go crash into this bridge. See, this is how much power you can get if you can kick in the booster. That's why I don't recommend it during high wave conditions. Due to the naturally stable shape of the boat, the keel's good enough to uh, give it good. Now, for cargo missions, when um, you have stabler waters, I did want there to be some kind of advanced stabilization systems. So I did go ahead and install an active stabilizer in the belly of the boat. Not a big one though, just a small one to con to balance out large amounts of weight being shifted around. But that is not at all for the support of the actual boat. The boat doesn't need active stabilization. It's pretty darn stable, realistically stable. When you turn, it lists. You know, it's supposed to do that. You're supposed to be turned slow if you want to not have it list like that. Way. We accelerate up towards this bridge post here. We should see a red light kick on in a minute. Yep, there it is. 
collision. And see, the boat will still go just fine. Because most of the logic has been kept in the belly at the back. But we do have some... There's fuel filters, so what the what the worst thing that could happen, possibly, is that it contaminates the fuel with water. So what I did to counteract that is putting filters on the fuel line from the front tank, feeding to the back. You notice that we lost one of our sensors for the river cam. The right sensor's dead. Basically, when the warning though, the warning lets us know that some of our things could be falsified typical thing that can happen when you crash the front of this boat is every here and there you will lose your fuel reading because there's some math at the front that deals with fuel or you'll lose the front fuel reading I don't think we did did we oh yeah we did we lost the front fuel reading but we didn't lose the back fuel reading that's why you notice it's not going down yeah, that's just things when you damage the boat, things break, you know. Now, when you damage the back, you're pretty much dead in the water, but it rarely happens. Megalodon might happen. And I mean, it's all varying intensities, but if they do get the back bottom of your boat, that's where the engine controller, like all the logic for this boat goes through one controller. And without that controller, you're dead. You're done. And so if that gets damaged, the whole boat's instant dead. There's just no way to drive it, you know. But with repair tools and things, you can fix it. Anyway. Yeah. So, weather readings over here, these don't actually go to anything, but you can use your tool tips on them. See, I'm trying to think, but I've forgotten anything. I don't think I have. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. I just wanted to log what I've been doing. Thanks.